Hey guys, Matt D'Angelo here, and today what I'm going to share with you is how to create your own feature engineering agent that you can use to automate feature engineering with AI. And this is all part of a whole new series of uh, tutorials that I'm going to be sharing on creating AI copilots for data science tasks. Okay, so um, this is the code that we're going to go through today. Um, I will walk you through this. I'll walk you through how to build one of these agents, how to automate the whole process. Um, but first, what we need to do, uh, I need to share with you where I'm going to be uh, or what I'm building, what this project is and how it's going to help you. So we're going to use this AI data science team that I'm developing at Business Science. And what this is, is like your army of co-pilots. OK, so just kind of wrap your head around that for a second. So I'm going to give you a bunch of different like AI agents and, and access to this through this repo. All right, and a link into the video. You can check out the GitHub repo. Make sure to give it a star. I think we're already up to yeah now 145 stars. But this is how we're going to get access to these agents much faster, and they're going to be able to do like the mundane tasks like data cleaning, feature engineering, data wrangling, you know, all the stuff that keeps you from doing your data analysis. And if you they're designed to be used on any type of data science project that we normally work on, things like customer cut customer churn modeling, employee attrition, lead scoring, you know, all the common ones, the ones that I've, you know, had jobs and people reach out to me that want, you know, projects built. So this is the, the GitHub repo. You'll see that we're working on various agents. Um, I've already done a previous tutorial on the cleaning agent. Now we're going to be focusing on the feature engineering agent. So check the repo out. You'll learn a lot more information, but this is going to be kind of like the basis of what we're going to start with today. All right. So let's dive into the code. I'm actually going to close out of that for a second. And the code that I'm going to be sharing with you comes from this fourth AI tip. So I'm using my new AI tips newsletter to really document the process of building these feature engineering agents, the data cleaning co-pilots, all of the stuff that I'm building for that AI data science team. So the problem that we're focused on today is that feature engineering is a time consuming process that keeps us away from like doing the important stuff, which is like making the machine learning models, getting the business insights, analyzing data. And obviously the feature engineering is a key component in that. So what we want to be able to do is to have AI to help us build these features. And then also in another video, I'm going to show you how you can actually work with AI and have kind of a back and forth to be able to modify and add new steps. So uh, goals today though, I want to introduce you to my new AI data science team of co-pilots. We kind of did that already. I showed you the GitHub repo. So make sure to go check that out. Links in the video notes. And please do give it a GitHub star. The next thing that we're going to do, we're going to actually make automated feature engineering code. We're going to use these co-pilots, the, the, the feature engineering co-pilot that I built for you. And then I'm going to share how to use that AI co-pilot to make your own feature engineer function that's going to work on this customer churn data set. All right, so link to the repo is in the code. If you want access to this code, it's all through my AI tips newsletter. So I also have another link. If you want to register for the newsletter, you get all of these tips that I've added in here. So, you know, you even get the code from like the, the previous tips like the that I had mentioned, the data cleaning AI copa. You get all that stuff in here. Okay. So the libraries we're going to use, we are going to use OpenAI. So we're going to import from Langchain OpenAI, chat OpenAI. If you don't want to use OpenAI, then you can use Olama. You just swap this out and pull in chat Olama. So from Langchain underscore Olama, import chat open a op, or chat Olama. All right. So the beautiful thing about Langchain and LangGraph, they make things so easy for us to like swap out different LLM providers and, and use whatever you want. So if your company can't use OpenAI, no problem. I'm going to use OpenAI for this demo but feel free to swap it out with whatever LLM that you want to use. The rest of these libraries, these are kind of like standard libraries that we're going to be utilizing for a lot of our different projects, like the OS for operating system, Sys, Path, YAML, Pandas, Pretty Print. But I'll kind of explain them as we use them. But uh, real magic is this AI data science team dot agents. So we're going to import make feature engineering agent. And that's an, a function that I pre-built for us to kind of get us up and running with these feature engineering agents and create it's an agent to automatically create features for us. Okay. All right. Next thing we need to set up some stuff. So we're going to set our path route to this folder here, which is the 004 automate feature engineering copilot. So that's my directory. I'm going to just store that as a variable called path root. I'm going to then set up my LLM. 
So for this tutorial, I have it set up for OpenAI. You'll need an API key from OpenAI. All you do is you go to their website, you log into their API, you give them your credit card, and they give you a API key. And as you use it, they will charge you. Um, it's very cost effective. I think this month I've only spent like 40 cents and I've been making hundreds, if not thousands of LLM calls. Okay, uh, so you're gonna put your API key in here. Uh, I have mine stored in a credentials.yml file that I don't wanna share with you guys. I wanna keep that private. So keep your API keys private. Um, next thing, so that's gonna be uh, stored in our OS environment as a variable called OpenAI API key. Uh, the model I'm gonna specify for this tutorial is my GPT-40 mini model. This is a very cost-effective and highly performant model. It does a pretty good job. Uh, I'm gonna set up logging. So this is important. What this is gonna do is it's gonna create, it's gonna set up this folder and it might not show for you right off the bat, but it's this AI functions folder. We're gonna log our feature engineering pipeline that it, that it builds for us inside of this folder. It's really cool. And then the next thing we need some data. So this is gonna load in a, trust, a customer churn data set. So this is a little bit of information on the data set. There's a churn feature that we want to, that's our target variable that we want to eventually take into a machine learning model. Okay. All right, next up, let's create the co-pilot. So we've got our data set in here and this is what we want to feature engineer. We can see some issues with it. So we're gonna have, if I just look at the data frame, we're gonna have things like gender, female, male, machine learning. The problem is that machine learning code just can't deal with string text data. So we need to modify this. We need to engineer this feature for something like this. We would do like one hot encoding. For a customer ID feature, we would normally drop that because that's not gonna be beneficial to a machine learning model. So this agent's gonna analyze your data set and it's gonna recommend what steps to do to get this thing in the right format for our analysis. So here, I'm gonna minimize that so we can kind of see and go through down, down, down through the code. All right, so to make this feature engineering copilot, we're gonna run this code here that sets up our AI model and it's gonna create this agent and then when we print the agent to the screen, we're gonna see this thing, it's called a mermaid plot. And this is basically a, a workflow. So this is gonna be the step-by-step -step process where we provide the information for this agent to run and it's gonna take all of these different steps. So it's first, this node, is gonna recommend the feature engineering steps. In the second node, it's gonna then create the feature engineering code to run these steps. Then it's going to execute the, that code on your data set that you provide it. If there's any problems, it's gonna to attempt to fix it a couple of times, it could go in this loop, but assuming that it's correct, then what it'll do is explain the code and then we'll have some a response that's given back to us to analyze. So let's do this. Next, we've got our agent, let's run this. I will explain what's happening while it's running. So we do specify the target variable churn. This is optional. If you don't have a, a target variable, say if you're doing like unsupervised learning, you can just leave this out. We're gonna give it the data. Note that I do convert it to a dictionary. This is important because LLMs can't really handle Pandas data frames. You need to give it dictionaries so you can like actually share information with them. Um, Okay, and then you can see that this is running. Max retries three, retry count. Um, so you can see here, we are having, I am running into a few issues here. Um, it's saying cannot set item on categorical. So it looks like it's running into some problems. Here, let me figure out what's going on. Okay, so I ran it a second time and I got some better results here. So the first time, you know, I uh, ran into some issues. The second time, this thing uh, did uh, perfectly. So let me show you what happened. The, when we run this, the response that it gives us back is this a dictionary. So I'm converting it to a list, and this, these are all of the outputs that come back that are that our agent has now completed. Okay, so when it walked through those nodes, basically by the end of it. This is what we get out. So we inputted our, our data set and identified the target variable churn and out, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna return all of these different things. Some of them are more important than others, so I'll walk you through the ones that are important. First off, we wanna check out what did our initial data frame look like. So this is our initial data frame. Uh, you can see that 7,043 rows by 21 columns. And then if I do the info on it, you can see here what we've got. Now, if I take a look at this, the, this is the from the response data engineer. So that's going to be this one right here. 
So this is going to be after the agent has executed the code on your data set. This is what that response is going to look like. So let's run this shift and enter. Now I didn't run the info, um, but you can see now there's 31 columns. Okay. And uh, what I, if I run info, I can see what these columns look like. So some of these columns have been one hot encoded. Basically all the data should now be numeric. So it should be prepped for a machine learning model. You can see you got zeros and ones in here for some of the one hot encoded features. You've got data that's, that's all numeric and, and ready. So like that ID feature that's been dropped and those, those sorts of things have been applied to this data set. So that's good. This is something that we can you know, gives, gives us promise that it, we can work with it. Next thing, what feature engineering steps were taken? So this is where you want to evaluate, okay, what did this AI actually do? And how can I explain this and, and, and understand, you know, what its thought process was. So this is the, from the messages so that, that comes from this. If you look at this response keys, that's in this messages field. And you can see what the agent was. So feature engineering agent, and these are all the steps. So it has a numbered list. First thing it did was convert total charges to numeric. It saw that, you know, one of the columns total charges was non-numeric and it should have been numeric. So it converted that for us. Second thing, it removed unique string features, customer ID column, which is unique for each record, doesn't provide useful information. So that's good. This is stuff that I would normally have to like figure out for myself. Remove constant features. You know, there, there was nothing that was performed, but it did a check. High cardinality, no high cardinality features were identified. One hot encoding, uh, certain features were identified. Leaving numeric features untransformed. That's, that's a step that I usually tell it to do. I don't like it to scale and center features unless I specifically say because XGBoost, you don't really need it when I use you know that type of machine learning algorithm. Okay. So you can go through this after you run it, but these are the steps that I got from when I ran it. If you want to see what the actual function looks like, that's this here. It's stored in the response feature engineer function. So you can see this is an actual function definition that has the imports embedded in it. So these are the things that it's using, like scikit learn preprocessing, one hot encoder, label encoder, and then you can see how it's actually executing these steps. Um, another cool thing is that if you set up the logging, which we did here at the beginning, so I have a log path as the path root to the AI functions folder. Now I have this feature engineer.py file, okay? And if I pull that open, that's the exact function. So this is great when we create our pipelines, we can just pull in this function now. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So if you take your current working directory, and if you run this code here with your path current work directory and you add to it the path root, remember that was this folder here, and then you append that, you can then, you can call the function. So here, let's do this, shift and enter. We're gonna then, once I, I've appended that path to my system path, I can, it can now recognize this folder here, this AI functions folder and grab out this feature engineer. So if I do from AI functions dot feature engineer import feature engineer, um, I can then run that on the raw data. So let's check this out. This is my raw data, data frame. Okay. And then if I run the feature engineer function on it, shift and enter, we can see now it's dropped the customer ID. It's converted some of these to total charges to numeric. Churn is now zeros and ones, which is good. So it's label encoded churn, gender male, partner yes. So these features have all been one hot encoded if they were categorical. All right, cool. So you have now just experienced this first AI feature engineering copilot. So you can automate feature engineering now and really take a lot of the, the load off your shoulders to be able to do some of these like common data science tasks that honestly take a lot of time and automate it a little bit and get it done faster. Okay. So my goal is to have a whole team of AI co-pilots. So you've seen right now the feature engineering, but I also have cleaning, I have data wrangling, I have co-pilots I'm going to be developing for machine learning and the full process, the full workflow. I am looking to get feedback. So if you have any feedback on anything that you're running into, make sure to try it out. And then if you want to provide feedback, the easiest way is to go to the AI data science team go to issues and you can add issues in here. So you can see one of the, our users has requested a full stack data science agent to actually build apps for us. So that, I think that's pretty cool. And I'm gonna try attempt that once I get a few more agents developed. You can add your own issues there. I'm also looking for ideas on what other AI co-pilots that you want me to create. So send free feedback here, this is the link. Also down the road, so I do have a generative AI and LLMs for data scientists I have 
workshops that I'm running that are free. I'll include links to those in the, um, in the uh, video notes, but also I have a full eight week boot camp if you really wanna learn how to build these AI agents yourself, okay? And this is kind of like the, the curriculum but you go all the way from like building retrieval, augmented generation agents, business intelligence, AI co-pilots with SQL and pandas, customer analytics agent teams, so multi-agent workflows, time series forecasting agents, and then actually deploying. So LLM deployment with AWS Bedrock, fine tuning LLM models uh, and RAG deployments with AWS Bedrock, and then AI app deployments with AWS Cloud, Docker, EC2, and Nginx. So these are all the things that like, if you actually wanna take and productionalize AI for your company and build enterprise grade applications. So you can check that out here. This is a paid program. So just a heads up, it's not, this product is not free. And I'll include a, a, again, a link in the video tips. All right, I will see you soon. Enjoy, let me know what you think and uh, talk to you later.